Hello GSV peeps, thank you Bobby here and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program and uh, this is the second but last mission in the Making History DLC content and we have to send a rover to Minmus uh, that's why I'm selecting Minmus from the menu there I'm playing this back at 10 times speed so it's a little bit on the fast side but this is going to be another quite long video even without the live commentary so this build was complicated by keeping down to the price limit. As you can see, I've got a quite a mixture of techniques here. There's some solid fuel boosters and some uh, asparagus and uh, some mixture of uh, relatively cheap engines because you've got to keep the you can't just put a big engine on because it's just too expensive. So uh, more of the inside a bit later because I've had to cut back on what I was using for the rover when we get to Minmus as well. And so far this is just a box standard take off launch and I'm doing it all by hand as you can see I've got SAS on and I don't know what went wrong there. I have no idea. I ought to perhaps look back at it and see if I had the staging was wrong or something like that. But as you can see, I went to stage and for some reason everything went off. But let's go back, do another relaunch and as you can see this one has gone fine. And I didn't change any of the uh, staging. So we're just inserting it up to orbit here. Went for a, a relatively steep orbit. Hoping this engine is powerful enough to sort of get the horizontal velocity we need without needing too much of a, a run up at it. Uh, just going for a standard orbit, I think we went for about sort of 80,000. And as you can hear in the background, we're still under Covid lockdown. Lots of noise, people doing stuff in the background. But there we go. So what I'm doing now here is just tweaking the inclination to match something a little bit closer to what Minnesota's is. That will make it easier to... Uh, oh, so that was very fast. But uh, you just caught a quick glimpse of the rover there. I'll say more of that later. Just manually tweaking it, not really use a manoeuvre node. Just get it to rough because it's easier to... Once we've got a, a much closer inclination, inclination we can the intercept without to worry about getting too far out. A bit of a moon encounter there which usually messes us up rather than helps us. And there we go, there's our minus encounter there. And do try and tweak it a little bit here, but the problem is it's such a you know it's easier just to crack on one like this and, and just get on with it. Tweak it when you're a little bit closer. I wasn't too worried about an equatorial orbit because it's going to want us to land in a certain place and guaranteed that's probably not going to be on the equator so I did go with the plan of going for a 45 degree um, inclination ish but preferably sort of with the rotation of Midmus there. So we can slow the video down and as I ditch the rear mate to that first stage there I can see the second stage is going to start burning and we're going to burn our uh, way to the encounter to Minmus. On top of that you can see I've got a lander with some spare cans there they're obviously you know, like an asparagus theory punched in and then on top of that is the lander. Now those of you with sharp eyesight would have spotted the lander is going to be on top of the, not the lander, the rover is going to be on top of the lander. So when the lander lands we can use I said I've got some uh, RCS on there so we can jet our way off. I don't know how effective that's going to be, but Minmus's gravity is very low and I'm hoping that uh, it'll be quite an easy job. Otherwise, well, it must have been quite easy, but otherwise I'd have ditched it by now. So I'm just over burnt there. I'm just going to perhaps burn it back a little. And uh, yeah, when, if it, uh, it doesn't work, I'll have probably redone the whole video, redesigned the whole spacecraft and you, know, you wouldn't be watching this as it is now. Though I do like showing people my mistakes as well as the, the good stuff. So, relatively easy. Put a, got a relatively good engine on this. Not going with nuclear engines or anything. Again, I'm trying to, I think I've got the cheater engine on this. Look back at the aircraft in a minute. 
aircraft, spacecraft. Go on, turn around, look at the other side. Well, that's not the cheetah, it's the, the twig puzzle thing. Well, I can't even remember what it's called, but yeah, making the history engine. And then I did actually go for the engine on the lander to be, oh, what's that, the 707 engine. Oh, I can't remember what that's commonly called now anyway. But you can see our little lunar the module there. You know, it's, a, it's a mining expedition, this. It's got a little miner on the back, a little ore tank. It only wants me to collect a very little bit of ore. Something to do with putting on chips or eggs or something, I can't remember. And you can see that uh, there's a bunch of RCS tanks. It's got a little bit of uh, uh, solar paneling on it. And uh, I've got for one of those funny little two Kerbal things, um, two Kerbal cockpits. And the little seat on the top, well, those who played this mission realised that actually one of the requirements of the mission was to put one of those funny little external seats on as well, so I've just chucked it on there. No intentions of reusing it, really, but... And we've put ourselves into orbit around the... Well, is it? Manit, captured... Manit? Moon. Captured body. Midmus. And looking at that, you know, my whole theory of not going for an equatorial orbit because the landing zone wasn't going to be near the, equ the equator, and it is. So we are going to basically burn ourselves down and, and we'll just wait for a few orbits and rotations of Minmus. At some point it'll come underneath our, our orbit there. And I want to do it on the day bound, day -bound side because uh, it just makes it easier to see for you guys and obviously for me for landing as well. Landing on Mimus is dead simple. If you've never done it, it's easier to land on than the moon. There is so little gravity, you just need to depower the engines and use very, very little thrust. You can crash and burn, but uh, it's a lot easier to do. So you see, 45 degree orbit like this, I'm just going to wait a couple of orbits until the landing zone gets underneath our path and then we can reduce that down. So we speed back up just to get us to the right point. And sort of past it then, but to be honest it's fairly easy to correct it and send it to the orbit. It's going to be fairly low, got a reasonable amount of thrust, and actually what I've done is just go for, a, go for a normal burn there and just to bend it around a little bit. See, that's our landing zone, that is our little uh, the lake in the front. See the view out of the cockpit, all you can see is that heat shield. Um, discuss the plan for that in a bit, but um, as we're coming to land you can see I can use that insertion engine to save a little bit of fuel in our lander and uh, use most of that for actually slowing us down. What I've done here is pretty much stopped it you know, at about 6,000 metres above and as I'm uh, burning retrograde the, the spacecraft will automatically, I'm not burning, oh yeah I was burning really retrograde, I've just turned it back, just kicking off all our horizontal speed here, just drop literally, drop straight down. So uh, we'll go back to retrograde, you'll see our retrograde marker is virtually right on top of that pip, so that's absolutely brilliant. Plus you can use the figures at the top of the screen there to figure out what our, our, um, uh, our horizontal velocity, velocity is. Right, to get rid of that first stage, I said there's plenty of fuel left in there. Could have saved some of that, put on a half-sized tank maybe, but extend the legs and just come straight down like this. So, 15 meters per second is a little bit fast, so I'm just going to use that little engine on the lander just to slow us down. Now it's, it is, as I said, really pretty powerful, but you don't want to sort of perhaps trust in a suicide burn, so a little bit of extra fuel in this just to help things on. And then on the return back to Kerbin, I was planning on using any excess fuel I got in this stage just to slow me down, so I can do a direct insert slow me down. It's coming down here. See? A little bit of debris there. Nice bit of fireworks from that last stage crashing into Midmus. Now the, as you can see from where I am here the uh, rover is perched right on top. Uh, the rover is in two parts. The idea is to drive it around as a whole rover but rather than transporting the whole lot back is, is eject the back half with any of the unspent RCS fuel and the solar panels and such like and just take the cabin and the ore back home. Having thought about it, 
the ore is quite heavy and the relative weight of the rest of the vehicle wouldn't have really been too much. Anyway, so the next part of the mission, what we're going to do is uh, extend... Well, actually, that's my big mistake. You'll see this later. But, uh, next thing, I should have extended the solar panels, but I didn't. Now, there is a probe core in the top of this landing stage, so I could have used that, but more of that later. I'm going to undock, just basically turn the RCCs off. Uh, thrust backwards, which will lift us up. Come on, I did slow this down so we could see it. There we go. So thrust up, thrust forward, rotate. Other way, of course, and then just land gently. Well, okay, not sort of gently, but there you get that. That's the point of it. Now, with all those uh, RCCs on, RCS, I don't want RCCs, but RCS, all that fuel, you know, I can because Midmus is quite uh, low gravity. The view from the inside the cockpit, nothing particularly special, but there we go. And actually, the uh, engine is all sat behind me, but can't see it. Bit of a graphics glitch there. Let's come back out of it, just swap between the two. And the plan now is uh, off we go. And actually, in a minute, we'll see on the map that uh, there's the activate navigation. Uh, there's the waypoint. Uh, it's miles away. Now, I hate rovers, especially on Midmus, but you know, rovers tend to be very, very unstable. And actually, I had problems with this, as you can see, I've got ACS on, which makes for some reason that when you press forward, it wants to rotate forward, which is what the SAS, and there is an, uh, a reaction wheel on this as well. So I spent ages and ages messing around with the motors and the traction. I take the braking off the front wheels, just put it onto the back wheels because I don't want it flipping forward. Uh, I, I take the torque off the, the reaction wheels. Uh, in the end, what it, you just need to take the SAS off. But even so, you slightly hit the hit the slightest hump on this, and it's going to take off. So, and at this point here, I must admit there is a point, and you'll see in a minute when we speed it up. I do engage my chip and the autopilot because you can't go any more than about ten meters per second and keep any stability for any decent length of time. Uh, it's just not impossible. So I, I'd, I'd set it up, I'd walk off, have a cup of tea, come back and find myself exploded. So I did engage match step. So I thought I'd speed this section up. Have a few amateur artistic shots. Try for a rock or two. Uh, we'll bring you back when uh, we get to the drilling site. <laughs> So there we go. We're here and I'm just about to deploy the old drill. Just checking that uh, everything's all stable. Not going to disappear off anyway. Uh, turn these radiators off. On, rather. Activate those because we generate a bit of heat when, heat when we're drilling. One radiator would be enough, but uh, two makes it obviously symmetrical. And it, uh, we only need to drill one and a half units. Uh, tank is enough for 70. That was it, 65. I can't remember. And I just thought we'll try and get, uh, try and get our engineer up to this seat, but realize you had to do a right hand click on it but so I'm going EVA flying around a bit go on, get up there go on and he doesn't want to understand he wants to stay inside that's where all the snacks are but Jebediah has promised to bring him out a, a Snickers bar and a bag of what sits once uh, we've got our 
bit and a half. It's not a ton and a half, but as you can see, it takes ages to get anywhere on Minimus because of the low gravity. Go on, get in. In a minute. There we go. Cool. Right, now he's at least he's got a good view of what's going on there. He can keep an eye on pressures and temperatures. And Jebedar can well, don't know what Jebedar is looking at. Looking out the window. I'm tremendously excited. So there we have it. There's our next coordinates. And track the drill, stop the drill. We'll keep the radiators activated. We'll just head on towards the next one, which is again our arms away. And I admit uh, I'm just gonna skip over this. There's not really any point in showing you so you look at the scenery that there is none of it. Apart from that weird green rock we saw earlier. But uh, I think that's part of the other breaking ground DLC, but you can probably get some sort of scanner down here get lots of lovely science from it but that's not the mission today so we'll come back and do that another day but it's, oh, look at how boring it is over there so I must admit I put in MacJep and put in the autopilot set it up for 10 meters per second I well, just off I went made myself a cup of tea and uh, over the speakers in the background I didn't hear a very happy sound. This is Bill trying to keep Jebediah alive using his head. So, well, there we go. Luckily, we do a save, and that's why we can start and do it all over again. This time, I think, right, okay, got all this RCCS. Let's try and skip a fly over there. But if I was to do this again, I would probably put a bigger engine on, not just do it with RCCS. RCS. Where do I get the RCC from? Anyway, because uh, it's not that much quicker than driving, and uh, you can't do this on autopilot, so it makes it. But it's great fun. Did try any acrobatics, mind you. But it works quite well stable. Notice I'm not using SAS. Actually it's easier the higher you go. I believe you could even put this into orbit if you really wanted to. And it even lands relatively easily. Now again this is about sort of six times speed so uh, it was a lot more gentle and less dramatic than what it looked. But there you go. And it's at this point of the mission where we realise it's going to get a little bit more interesting, honestly. A signal. Okay, well, as we look at the map, we see it's not that far away, but we still have to drive there. So I'm just going to cut that bit out. So we get here to find that Valencia, <laughs> Val Valentina, or however you want to pronounce it, well, she's been a very naughty Kerbal, and after looking around and not being able to see her, zooming out and this is like graphics shadow glitch actually points out she's over there which is lucky so we drive just towards her try not to run her over I mean she's been stranded here for goodness knows how long uh, not too sure how she got here where's the rest of her spaceship she surely didn't EVA pack over here HQ will answer all those questions when we get her back of course, I've got a problem now. I have a two-man cockpit and an external seat. So we can get Valentina inside, but where does Bill go? This is the problem. We need to bring her home. Now, my plan was to say, ditch the back end of this craft, dock it back onto, well, onto the, uh, the lander, and then just bring the bomb off of this craft, big heat shield and sort of not worry about the, the weight side of things. But is Bill going to survive behind the heat shield? I don't know. It's a long drive back to the lander anyway, so I've got a little bit of time to think about it. Now some of you might be a bit here. 
I don't have to drive back. This thing's got a core on it. I could fly this to the rover. Hitch up. Off home. It's then I suddenly realise when I landed, the probe core's dead. There's no battery power. I didn't. I didn't uh, extend the solar panels. Now, using MetGem, normally I've turned utilities on. Part of utilities is it will extend solar panels and landing gear and other stuff automatically, but this one it doesn't. It's the Terrier engine. That's that little engine on the bottom. I just remembered. Also, I've seen it on the screen here. But anyway, so um, I can't fire the engine. The engine Terrier doesn't have a generation anyway. I can't extend the panel. I'm a bit stuffed. Now, there is a bit of a glitch in this. If you save and then go back in, you get the split second where you can extend the panel even though you don't have any power. But I'm not going to use that glitch. I'm just going to have to bite the bullet and drive home. Now, the MHEB Auto Rover pilot is really good for flat stuff, but those of you spotted on the map, there's actually quite a big cliff here. And Valentina wants to drive, so we let her drive. As you can see, she's very happy. Bill doesn't know what's going on. I don't think Jebediah has told him. But we're getting quite close to the edge here. And actually, she's doing nearly 30 meters per second. She's never going to stop. Well, thank you, Valentine. Excellent display and some nice singing as well. Didn't even know you knew the Dukes of Hazard, but there we go. Be the Dukes of Hazard, I suppose. And as we speed up time again, oh, ah, oh, oh that was very lucky. Let's not kid around the bush. That's not the first time I tipped this thing over and then had to restart. But anyway, get that on top of there. That's the idea. We're just going to kick it up and tick it over. Go on, tick it over. Yeah, go on. This was not as difficult as I thought. I did think I might have to boot up the docking thing and go up a lot higher and then sort of come in from a height. But actually, just eyeballing it like this and a little bit overcooked there, but came around. There was. Might be more luck than anything else, but you know. At this point here, obviously. The rover itself is producing power, so I can get the old um, solar panels out. Oh, I don't know why I need them, because frankly the rover's supplying power. Except obviously now we've ejected. Well, when we say ejected, it hasn't ejected, it's just resting there. So we're going to... Let's get ourselves into orbit. Lose that... Come on, it's just annoying me. I had I, this idea of it sort of at nearly taking Bill out. No, that wasn't the idea. But yeah, I had this idea of it sort of ejecting off in an arc. Never did, just went straight off, straight back again. Could have put a little RCS, not an RCS, um, one of those little micro jetty things. Anyway, so Bill is having a whale of a time. He's sat right on the nose of this, this cockpit. The other two are facing backwards and just have a big sight of the heat shield. I've messed up the order. I got, you know, I'm very excited. I managed to get this far without too many problems and uh, totally messed up the orbit but you know we've got lots of fuel we have oh, I can't see it on the small screen there but there thousands thousands literally thousands of DV so we can get ourselves out into a nice decent orbit and then think about going home as far as I know uh, the mission just requires us to get home I don't think it requires us to land in any particular spot so uh, it's a bog standard, because we haven't come off in an equatorial orbit, getting home, you see, we're, that's on the high side of our orbit, so I think I put in, yeah, I do, I equalise the orbit, just because otherwise we end up going into, coming home in a polar orbit or something daft like that. 
but box down the door but get around the other side extend the apoapsis out until we get an escape point and then rejoin Kerbin as we join Kerbin's orbit just becomes slightly easier we can obviously burn up the periapsis bring the apoapsis apoapsis down and then burn up the new periapsis and bring the new apoapsis that makes it sound it's a lot simpler just keep burning retrograde until you get a until you get an orbit or one of these sides would be the periapsis bring it down to about 80,000 that's what we're aiming for nice little low orbit because then we can splash in now remember we have just ignoring that little encounter we have Bill he's sat on the front of this spacecraft so I really want to come down to a lowest orbit as possible and then do the re-entry and use whatever engine I can get out of the Terrier whatever power to just reduce the re-entry heating down to a minimum I mean I want no re-entry heating possible that's the only way that Bill's going to survive Okay, so it has given us a, a landing point, and uh, again we're not quite in the right position for it. But you know, burning anti-normal or normal will raise it. I'm not burning quite in the right place here either, but it'll do it. He says, or well, perhaps no, I do. Uh, yes, I've got. Come back. Do it here. There we go. Actually, you want to go the other way. We can actually get it, and actually, this will be timed quite nicely because I can do it here, do it a little bit more viciously, and we will be in daylight when we land, which makes it a lot easier for me and a lot easier for you guys to see what I'm doing. Some of you might have noticed actually, uh, my weather mod seems to have gone duff, got no clouds on Kerbin, but that might be because this is running on a mission, it may not may like the clouds. I've got a few other mods running as well, which I've uh, added in the last couple of episodes, but not actually had a chance to play them yet, including the Keythane mod, which uh, I'm not even sure works with this version, but I'm going to play with that in another series. Anyway, here we go. Burning up. And at this point here, obviously a liberal use of the uh, quick save, though I'm not sure if this plan doesn't work, I'm not sure how it's going to pan out because I don't think the game will let me send up a, a rescue vehicle because that's the only other way of doing it really is sending up a, a rescue vehicle taking Bill off and letting the others two come back maybe even ejecting Bill put him into orbit and assuming he's going to come back anyway just burning myself a little bit anti-normal as well as uh, retrograde, bring that landing point down. I'm aiming for this, but I don't think at this point I'm going to make it. Um, so I'm going to be a bit far out. I can't remember what the radius of the target is, but we're going too fast, and this little Terrier engine doesn't do as much as it perhaps should do. But I'm also a little bit high. But we're down to 15, no, 1700 meters per second. And uh, get the looking good at the moment the only problem is I, you know, I can't use my heat shield and the engine because they're not rigged that way around in fact, I wouldn't be able to do that anyway anyway I could have done that it was something with a I don't know, just idea springing in my mind for if I want to play this mission again I must admit it's not been my favorite mission as you can see I've overflown it but I think it's got a nice little uh, wide radius it just looks we land on some of this now this is where I'm getting worried you know I, I got no temperature I don't know if he get any temperature or whether he just poof into a blade into a puff of smoke I mean he used to get some protection from that ore canister but uh, oh, at this point I decided to ditch that engine and try and get that 
heat shield inflated ASAP. Well, it wouldn't inflate, but remarkably, he survived. And obviously, now we're you know got the great big barn door in front of us. We slow down a hell of a lot more. Uh, I'm looking at the speed we're falling at, and hoping the drogues slow us down, and then the main chutes show us down. I must admit, it was rather just sort of gambling on four parachutes having enough to hold up this part of the. It should do. It's surely a capsule with a couple couple of batteries on it, so a little bit of windy pops there. Uh, this would have been available but if we'd filled up that canister, not just had the one and a half units or whatever. Yeah, quick EVA report while I'm here. Well, why not? And I'm thinking, right, well, yeah, we're slowed down to 80, but if I drop that heat shield, will that have an effect? I don't know how heavy the inflated heat shield is when it's inflated, but if we time accelerate down, have a look at that, it's 63 kilometers. Sixty-three kilometres anyway. Go on, drop the heat shield off. I know I do, because it doesn't do what I think it's going to do. There you go. There's the drogue shoots. Slow me down to thirty-three. Hopefully the big shoots open. I mean, there we go. And there's dropping the heat shield. And now we're down to five meters per second, which I'm sort of happy with. Heat shield drops fairly quickly, actually. But anyway, what a Obviously, I'm landing on the docking port, docking, docking port at this point. So, just trying to use the RCCS, not the RC, the SAS, just to try and get an, an attitude on the vehicle, which doesn't mean dropping bin on his head. So, 200 meters to go, and I think I'm just going to have to land it on the docking port. But I'm sure we will survive. Valentina and. Jebediah got a brilliant view of the crowd rushing towards them. But they're home. And that's it. Docking sports are really good landing gear. So using the SAS to rock it back onto its wheels. Uh, believe it or not, I could probably drive it home from here. But there's a mission success. Excellent bronze award. And I did get a bonus for landing uh, in the designated zone. Scroll down to the bottom, you'll see that. But otherwise, thank you very much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you want to see some more. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And uh, we'll see you all in the next one.